Good morning and welcome to University United Methodist Church. It's good to have you here on this day. It's going to be another busy day. It'll be the parking lot will be part of our interactions this day. So we will just pause in this space to recognize that we are here for worship. And before we begin worship, I would like us just to take a moment and recognize those that are veterans among us. Those that have served, will you be willing to stand up, please, so we can recognize you? Thank you so much for your service. And we know that, that we have many younger people that are serving uh, yet today and, and at a time that when we thought that maybe we wouldn't have to still have conversations about war, it continues to rear its head in places here and there. And so we are aware of that. So we are going to start with singing our song. Kids, are you ready to lead our song? Does anybody know what the song is? Everybody's now like, do we go up? Do we not go up? Joe, will you start us with, this is the day. invite you to stand as you are able as we physically move from whatever we had going on before worship to proclaiming the space that we are into for worship. 
It's about, often I think you've probably heard the expression, you never step into the same stream twice because the water is ever moving. So it is with worship. It's always moving for us. And so we make the choice to stand up and to be present to God in our proclamation of being in worship together. Let us share these words. We gather in the name of God, the all-powerful, the all-loving, the all-generous, we gather with hope and thanks in our hearts. We gather to see love in action and justice proclaimed. Let us worship. Let us continue our worship by singing hymn number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. be seated. As we come to our time of prayer, I'd like to offer a, a update on Marjorie Walton. We had a text just a little bit ago that she hopes to be home from the hospital uh, later this afternoon. So we, we praise God for that good news in, in this time of recovery. I invite you to be with me in an attitude of prayer. O oh, Holy One, we come as your humble servants and offer this time of worship. 
as we bow our heads in prayer before you. <clears throat> we are aware of the abundance of your love for us, revealed by your son, Jesus. We are honored that your love for us is so deep that Jesus humbled himself to come among us and live with us so that we might know of your love. Christ left behind the wonder of heaven and dwelt with us on the earth, enduring pain and suffering, hunger and hardship for our sake. We think of our veterans. We shall remember them. We do remember them. O oh God of peace, all who have given their lives in times of conflict and war, those who have served in our armed forces seeking to serve their country, and those who lost their lives, those whose lives were never the same because of their experiences. May we never forget them. We hold them in special tenderness on this day. God, we are so sorry for the times when we think we deserve to be honored and adored. Those times we forget that we are but a tiny part of a universe that is bigger and more worthy of adoration than we are. God, we are sorry for the times when we forget to be humble and to serve our fellow humans. Those times we are selfish and demanding of attention for the sake of it. God, help us to hear the words you long to say. Child, your sins are forgiven. Come and follow me once more. And so on this day, we pray for hope, healing, and courage for Marty, Teddy, Ernest, Clifton, Steve, Joel, Jackson, Todd, Doris, Dot, Opal, Sybil, Ruby, Lori, Maisie, Donna, Alice, and Marjorie. O oh, good and gracious God, we say to you in the silence, those things which are a burden to us this day. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We give to you those concerns that we have of loved ones who are suffering. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. And we give to you our own shortcomings, our own hardness, our own fears into this space. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. God, help us to accept your forgiveness, to renew our relationship with you, and to continue our journey through life with you, humbly serving our neighbors near and far. In your mercy, hear our prayer. So be it. Amen. Checking. Oh, good, it is on. All right, kiddos, come on down. Come on down. Good morning. Ooh, I'm seeing some K-State. Ooh. 
Okay, come on. Oh, I love that. That's so funny. You just come sit down right here for me, please. Here comes Teddy. Hey, buddy. Looks like Teddy got a haircut. Mmm, good looking. Okay, now then, I want you to notice here on the altar. Is there something different here on the altar? What's up, what's up on the altar? Turn around, what do you see? Oh, you see, good for you, presents. There are presents up here along with this beautiful, and I want to talk about gifts. God, don't wait till you shake it, I'll get to you, I promise. Okay. God gives great gifts. Good morning. Uh, you know what this is, and these are gifts, and this goes with the Bible story about the gifts that were given between God, King Solomon, and King David. Solomon was the son of the most famous biblical king, King David. Solomon knew that his father was going to be a hard act to follow. The people loved him, and King David served the Lord God. King Solomon knew that to be a great king, he would need to serve the Lord. So he decided to give a gift. Now, would you all please come sit down on the floor right down here, please? Let's come sit right here. I should have done this earlier. Come sit right here. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. It's okay. It's good. Come on down. Come on down. Because I want you to turn and face. Now, face the altar. Can you sit like right in front of the altar? I'm going to pull something out of a gift bag. Okay, so and what? This is what Solomon, this is what Solomon gave God. He gave God a gift. Now, can any of you read this word? Yet? <gasps> Worship, that's right. Worship is when we show something or someone that they mean a lot to us, that he or she, is, he is number one in our lives. Well, when King Solomon had given God his worship, he went to bed, and he started dreaming. God came to him in a dream and spoke, Solomon, I want to give you a gift. What would you like? Hmm, man, if God said he'd give me anything I wanted, wow, that's a lot to think about. Well, you know what? Solomon, being who he is, asked for, ooh, I wonder what he asked for. What do you think, what do you think Solomon asked God for? Any ideas? Okay, here's another word. Let's see who can read it first. What, uh? Close, close. Wisdom. <gasps> yeah, he asked to be smart. Solomon asked God for him to be smart. And the reason, Solomon, I want to give you a gift, what would you like? And Solomon wanted to be wise enough to take care of and lead his people. Solomon gave wisdom, but that's not all. He gave him something else. <laughs> On top of wisdom, mm, okay, here comes another gift. Another gift. Hmm. Okay, hmm, I wonder who can read this word. Are you ready? It could be a little harder. Weather. Not weather. Ooh, I love the W. Good. Well. Wealth. <gasps> what does wealth mean? Any ideas? He, God made him rich. He was rich with money. He was rich and he was so happy. He was rich with happiness. He was happy with that so he could take care of his people. So God gave him wisdom to be smart and money so he could help everyone. God's pretty good about this kind of stuff. Then, Solomon became very, very famous because he was such a wise king. The queen of Sheba heard about him and wondered, could this be true? Can that king really be that smart, that wise, and that rich? Well, she decided to find out for herself. So she set on a long journey and she found out it was all true. Now, Queen Sheba also brought many fine gifts herself, because that's what kings do with one another. I mean, kings and queens, when you come visit somebody, you, you bring them gifts. But the best gift she gave him was this. Hmm. She gave him a, the gift of... All right, here's another one. Here we go. Words. And words, because words are important. She spoke kind and good words to King Solomon. She told him what a good job she, he was doing. So she, she had said the king was in, she, so she was encouraging him. We all need good words in our lives. So these are the gifts that were given by God, King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. Yet the gift that God gave King Solomon came with something amazing because what God gives you 
leaves you with this word. If you get a, if you get a gift that you really, really, really like and you think it's really important or you're really happy to get it, God can give you those things and you can have what? Wow. The wow effect. Yep, you did. God is the wow in our lives. He will help us and help guide us whenever we need him. Okay, let's bow our heads for prayer, please. Okay, dear God, dear God thank you for your gifts to us. Thank you for your gifts to us. And let us remember, and let us remember to, worship you, to worship you so that you know, so that you know how, much we love you. how much we love you. Amen. Thank you for coming up with me. Okay. Okay. Not yet. That's after. Thank you, choir. So our scripture lesson today comes from 1 Kings verses, uh, chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. So we're going to hear about the Queen of Sheba. So I have to remember that several times in my childhood, I, I remember someone kind of in you know some kind of weird way go, well, they just think they're like the Queen of Sheba. And I really never got the connection. I wasn't thinking that had anything to do with the Bible. It was just like, OK, Queen of Sheba, whoever. We're going to find out about the Queen of Sheba right now. When the Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, fame due to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with riddles. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue. 
with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Solomon answered all of her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, it took her breath away. So she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your accomplishments and of your wisdom. But I did not believe the reports until I came and with my own eyes saw it. Not even half had been told me. Your wisdom and prosperity far surpassed the report that I had heard. Happy are your wives. Happy are these your servants who continually attend you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever. He has made you king to execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did spices come in such quantity as that which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Haram, which carried gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a great quality of almug wood and precious stones. From the almug wood, the king made supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, lyres also and harps for the singers. So much almug wood was seen or has come or been seen to this day. Meanwhile, King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba every desire she expressed, as well as what he gave her out of Solomon's royal bounty. Then she returned to her own land with her servants. Well, this was just impressive, wasn't it? So the best that research says right now is that probably the queen of Sheba came from what would now be uh, Yemen. And so she was probably a dark-skinned woman that had incredible power, but we only get her name or her, her uh, place in life and her location. We never have her name, but she was queen of the land of Sheba. And so once again, we're hearing the stories of women that not necessarily with names, but with a story that brings to us some wisdom, something that we can hold on to today and hold on to as we go into the future. And so, here we go with this symbol of wisdom, the owl that is there, shining down, looking on, watching. This owl that is there with the books, the scriptures that we use, that which help us to find a way in the world today, and pointing us always to understanding our view as being followers of Jesus. All of these things are coming together as we will finish up now this time in the Old Testament and we will begin Advent in just two weeks, believe it or not. And as we will pro progress through again some of the stories that will be pointing us to Jesus and the birth and that which had been proclaimed for centuries before. So this story with, with Solomon and uh, the Queen of Sheba is very interesting because it's probably about a thousand years before Jesus is born, before the Common Era. And there is this unusual uh, knowledge that the story of Solomon is well known enough that this queen comes to find out more. And she comes with riddles. Now, I'll let you do that little research on your own, what the riddles are, because they're, they're kind of complicated, and it wouldn't do well for probably a, a group discussion about what they meant and whether or not you could figure them out. But remember what happened with King Solomon earlier in the third chapter when the, the two women show up, and they're trying to figure out who has the baby. And that story was that there were two women and two babies, and during the night, one of the babies died, and both women claimed the living baby. And that Solomon said, 
the only answer here can possibly work is to pull out a sword and cut this baby in half so you can both have a baby. And he knew that the mother of the baby would say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. She can have the baby. That's a wisdom. That's a knowledge that makes a difference in how we live in community, that how justice is felt and justice is known in this world. And it's important. Um, I read this quote the other day, and it really struck something in me, and I think it talks about wisdom, too. So does anybody know the folk singer Tom Waits? Yeah, he's, he's very interesting, his, his uh, catalog is. And he kind of had a voice like everybody else, and then all of a sudden it turned into this really gravelly, low voice, and that's kind of became his, his uh, trademark. He does sing some yet, but he's decided that now that he really wants to put his time and attention into writing, and that's the place that he wants to have now that he's in his 70s. But he, he wrote this. We have a deficit of wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R, wonder. When I ask people questions now, they get out their phones. It's pretty easy, right? Yeah, it's just like, yeah, of course we do. And I say, no, I don't want to know the answer. I just want to wonder about it a while. Have we forgotten about what that is like to wonder, to stand in the place of not knowing, maybe to wrestle with it a little bit before we come to an answer. Our friend Google can provide a lot of stuff to us, but it doesn't give us the skills of standing in the unknown. And maybe we have to talk with someone else to get that peace that we don't understand yet. That we might have to go into some kind of a new setting to understand the questions that are before us in this day and age. And so the Queen of Sheba, she asked, you know, the riddles, but she also asked these questions about, oh my gosh, how is everybody so happy here? Everyone seems to be content. And they talked about what that meant. And, and Solomon was not in the least bit hesitant to answer her. It felt safe to engage in conversation together as some kind of equals, she being a queen and he being a king. And they learned from each other. And there was not a moment of... Uh, spies involved or information that I will use against you later. It was truly a information-seeking meeting. So I have heard of this new thing, and um, maybe some of you already are familiar with it. Do you know the Dunning-Kruger effect? Anyone? Anyone? Dunning-Kruger effect. So Sometimes it's called the Michael Scott effect of the office. And what did Michael Scott do? He knew this much, and he assumed he knew this much. And so what it is, it's a type of cognitive bias in which we overestimate our abilities in areas we know little about. Essentially, it states that the more incompetent someone is, the less aware they are of their own incompetence. <laughs> Ouch! Because <laughs> I think it's all of us, right? I mean, we know a lot of things, a lot of really good things, but not all of us know all those good things at the same rate. That you'll have an area of expertise and someone else will have an area of expertise and someone else will have. And so again, we're, we're talking about the ability of what community needs for all of us to be working together instead of just taking off with our little things. So there's four stages of competence. There, well, incompetence. The unconscious incompetence is you're ignorant of what you don't know. Anybody play golf here? 
Ever played golf? And like that first time you did it, it was perfect? (laughs) Couple of more lessons, a little bit more time, you get better at it, right? Kind of thing. Conscious incompetent. You're aware of what you don't know, but you haven't taken steps to learn more. Oh my, that kind of pokes me a little bit, you know? I may not know about it, but ah, well. Maybe it doesn't affect me enough to care. Conscious competence is when you're actively learning and acquiring knowledge about a subject. And unconscious competence, you've mastered a subject so extensively that you may forget or take for granted just how much you know. Oh my gosh, I love that. That even so, like you're walking around as the, uh, the, the encyclopedia that people are needing and you don't even know that you hold that kind of information. Something so exciting happened Thursday evening when the community of Wichita responded at First Church downtown to have what was then known as our DART assembly, and a name was chosen for the group. It's Justice Together. And so those will be the the words we use going forward here. Justice Together. There were... 35 churches that signed on the covenant at the beginning of this organization that we hope has a long history in Wichita. The two topics that will be studied for the next year will be homelessness and mental health. Now the reason that I wanted to talk about this Dunning-Kruger effect is because I think we're all in part, some part, of what that is with competence and incompetence on these subjects. Some of us know more than others. Some of us have an idea about what happens to lead to the place of homelessness. And if you've ever talked with anyone that is experiencing homelessness, the slide happens before they realized it. And there could be a couple of just hard choices, I won't even call them bad choices, because I will tell you about the people that I've met here that have come to us that need assistance, and the kinds of things that they have said that has led them to this place that they are facing an eviction. And let me tell you, eviction happens much more than probably most of us here realize. So one woman told me about her grandchild, that their car broke down, and their grandchild, an adult grandchild, they were the breadwinner for the family, and so instead of paying the rent payment, she paid to get the car fixed. And then the next month, there was another catastrophe that they had to use her money instead of paying the rent. And as many landlords that are probably good and gracious and able to absorb those kinds of fluctuations, not all can. And soon they were being told they had to leave unless they could pay three months' rent all at once. If it's been a long time since you have rented, let me just tell you that there's very little available in the city of Wichita for under $500 a month. Very little And it is very hard to get into those places that have vouchers that help to pay the rent. We know that if we're going to look at homelessness, we're going to have to look at the root cause of it, not just that last bit of writing a check. We have to bring all the players to the table because some of those landlords are the ones that are holding the deep knowledge. And I can tell you that my first instinct is to talk about those greedy landlords just needing their money, right? And that's my incompetence of not knowing what I don't know. That many of them are still paying mortgages. They still have to pay the rent, I mean, pay the insurance. They have upkeep on their buildings there and need the cash flow also. We're also going to be looking at mental health. And again, we have experienced the opportunity of serving folks with mental health issues here at the church. Recently, just again, 
this past week when we were able to feed a friend some oatmeal from Paxton's Blessing Box by mixing it up in the to-go cups with some of the hot water from the coffee maker to provide something. Something. Is it the answer? I don't think so. Is it a answer? Yes. And if we come together and we learn more about what we are called to do as followers of Jesus, we're going to want some of that wisdom that Solomon displays over and over again. And I wonder if when those times happened, if Solomon just like took a deep breath and sat there a moment instead of immediately. <coughs> because I think there's something about that pause that opens us to the Holy Spirit moving around us and with us and giving us courage. So here's the good news. As we are going to continue our process with justice together, there will be more opportunities to gather in, to come to be a part of it. We will continue to be getting reports back about the organization because we have both Guy and Nancy here that are serving as our main representatives into the organization. And Jane is getting ready to go do the laity training this next week. We have opportunities to take on and learn more about that which we don't know. And maybe in that, we will find the way to use wisdom in a new way. One of the things that was discussed on Thursday evening while we were in the assembly was that these two topics, which we voted on, these were the top two, next year we'll probably have some other topics to begin to step into, to understand in our community. That the other DART organizations that have been around for more than 40 years, you don't do it one time and it's a one and done and you've cured your neighborhood and your city of all heartache and pain. More things come up and more opportunities to serve come up. And we need to thank God that we have the ability to help each other in these days. I thank God that Diane Tombaugh works at Open Door and heard about the need for stuffing, boxes of stuffing. And that after last Sunday's great response to it, we went from 500 boxes of stuffing to 1,000 boxes of stuffing. And that is our goal, and it will be delivered tomorrow to Open Door to literally feed our neighbors and friends. My goodness, if we can rise to the occasion on such a short notice, what all can we do as believers together? What can we do to make the world a better place? What can we do to be bearers of justice into a world that keeps telling us we're not able to make a difference? Sit down, be quiet, you don't know what you're doing. We need to be open to learn, to hear, to know. I ask that you spend some time this week when you think about all of the things that you are thankful for maybe ask god to truly lay it on your heart the place that you are called to serve now not the work you did 20 years ago but today going forward where are you willing to be as the ushers come forward to accept our gifts and offering you have an opportunity to touch that plate touch the plate with the thought of, show me, Lord. Show me how and when. Show me the ways that I can do the right thing. Show me the way to serve my neighbors with kindness and hope and possibility. And also maybe show me the ways to let go of those things that I think I already know so that I can learn more about the wisdom of community and serving together. We will make a difference. We will be the hands and feet of Jesus right here at the corner of 21st and Yale. Thanks be to God for the ways we will serve together in the days ahead. Amen.
join me in the prayer of dedication as we dedicate these gifts into service, into hope, into use for God's kingdom. God of us all, not all riches are silver or gold. You have given us a life to live, people to love, places to be. We are rich beyond measure. Help us to realize how fortunate we are and to offer our thanks to you. Receive the offerings we bring today. They are but a tiny portion of all that we offer. Take and use them so that the good news of your love will spread far and wide. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Those that are making announcements, please come forward. I'll make a quick announcement. Adult youth group will not be meeting for the next two weeks. This week, uh, we have too many out of town. And next Wednesday will be the Sunday, I mean, the Sunday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and we won't have any programming on that date. So we'll start again on the 29th. Adult youth group for absolutely everybody. Come and have some fun. We are stuffed. If you look at the back of my car, there are 200 boxes of stuffing there. If you look out in the narthex, there are over 200 boxes out there. Tomorrow, Glenn and I are going to Dillon's to pick up 500 boxes. You guys have done a really good job. If you did the math, that adds up to 900. I am pretty sure that when we leave here today, we will, I know that we will have less than 100 still to gather. It may all be there, but we'll get it put together by tomorrow. So thank you, thank you. Secondly, on behalf of the Staff Parish Committee, I more than invite, I urge you to express your thanks for our staff, for each member individually. There are journals on a table out in the narthex Please write your thanks on a page of the journals. They are labeled with little easels that say each of our staff members' names. Please take a moment this week or next week or the next week to write your thanksgiving for this wonderful, wonderful staff that we have. Aren't we blessed? Hello, hello. Stephanie Strickler here. Just wanted to give a quick update on kind of the fall pledge drive and some reminders. Um, at this point, we've had 48 um, individuals or families turn in their pledge responses um, for a total of uh, over $225,000, which is super exciting. Um, we've got a few more to kind of get to where we were last year. We had 54 total pledge units last year for around $243,000. So if you haven't turned in your pledge card and you would like to do so, we are absolutely still taking those. Would love to get those last few in. Um, this helps us determine our budget for the next year um, and just get all those ducks in a row before the year end. Um, the other reminder I would offer is for those who manage your own automatic withdrawal through our church website, as a reminder that is available. Um, just remember that if you changed the amount you are giving to the church, you will need to go and update that automatic withdrawal yourself. Um, if the church is withdrawing on your behalf, we do still have a few people that do that. We will update that for you to match your updated pledge card. Um, so thank you again for, for all your gifts. If you don't have a pledge card and you need one, those are still available um, out in the Northex. So thank you so much to everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Elena Nelson. I'm a senior studying music education at Wichita State next door. I've been singing here at university for two-ish, three-ish years. <laughs> And it's been wonderful. And before I get into the announcement, I just want to say, since you haven't maybe heard me speak before, <laughs> that you guys have such a warm and welcoming congregation, and it's been a blessing to sing here. And I want to thank you for having me. Um, so my announcement is that me being a senior this year, I get to put on a senior voice recital. This is going to act as kind of the culmination of the end of my time studying voice at the university. Um, it's going to be this coming Saturday, November 18th, 7.30 p.m. in Wiedemann Hall. I've heard Joe's put out a poster somewhere, somewhere. If, you, if you've seen it, I'm, I'm, there's a big picture of me out there somewhere <laughs> with all the information on it. Um, it's going to be a really special event. So if you've 
liked anything that you've heard from me here at church or if you just want to support me at this really special milestone in my education and my future career, it would mean a lot to me. So I just wanted to extend an open invitation to the congregation and to the choir. Um, thank you so much for having me. Hope to see some of you there. Yeah. And another musical opportunity, as I said last Sunday, uh, today at 3 o'clock at College Hill United Methodist Church, the Wichita Community Children's Choir is putting on their fall concert called Giving Thanks, and that's very appropriate. So if you feel like it, it's a great concert. Thanks. Okay, I knew I had too much. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> For those of you that are eligible to make um, distributions out of retirement accounts, um, don't forget that there is a benefit to having that distribution come directly to the church. So if that's an option for you and you're not already doing something like that, make sure you talk to your investment advisor or tax advisor. They can help you do that to kind of maximize the benefit to you and the church. If you have questions, you can route them to us. We are definitely not the experts, um, but, you know, we can kind of help guide you along that path. Um, but your best option will be your own investment or tax advisor. So thank you. And the last announcement is, if you're available to help, we are moving furniture right after church downstairs in Fellowship Hall because the carpet cleaners are coming. So we need some help with, uh, I think only the round tables are out right now and we'll be able to just roll those over to their uh, stand and we'll be able to fold up the chairs. It won't be anything real hard. And then over here too in the gathering place, we're having them do the carpet over here, but not here. So everything will move that way. So there's nobody's got to go up and down stairs with tables and chairs and all that. So I encourage you to do that. So anything else? Okay, I think we handled the world's problems. We're good now. So I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing hymn number six, uh, 97 for the fruits of this creation. So we go from this place 
We go out into the world to share that which we have within us, the light and the love of Jesus, to make a mark for those folks that are in a place of darkness and despair. Let us share these words of Cindy. We have worshiped the Holy One. We have dedicated ourselves to God once again. Go now as peacemakers, as justice bringers, take the love of God, the mercy and grace of our beloved Lord Jesus, and let the Spirit guide your way now and always.